My name is Nancy Fonicello. I live in Montana, and uh, I was introduced to porcupine quill work probably about 25 years ago. I my name's Shirley Mae Holmberg. The name I was given as an adult female is Yindad Leno. The place that I was born is called Ho Hudoda Tlatelten. And to uh, some people, it might just sound like a native word, but it means something like where the willows grow, and it's tan in Alaska. My name is Emma Hildebrand. My maiden name is Glacier, and my Athabasca name is Saguga, which in Koyukon Athabasca means my baby. Since I was the youngest of nine children, that's what my mother called me when I was small. There was no one teaching it, so I figured out how to do it just by observing some of the old objects in museums, and, and that's how I started with porcupine quill work. Basically, the way I learned was to let the materials teach. Um, the porcupine quills can only be sewn down in certain ways because they have certain properties. They can be stiff or they fold in certain ways, so it was a question of learning what the materials could do, and that would help form the design or how you hold the thread or the needles or, or, or the different materials. So it was basically a question of learning what the materials could do and allowing them to dictate what the design was or how they were to be sewn down. I learned quill work when I was um, probably about 30 years old. I was part of a Master Artist Apprenticeship grant. I, I received one and an elder was going to teach me how to construct a dress. I looked in books, you know, any kind of book. If I saw something with beadwork or quill work or something, I'd open it up and I'd look at it and study it and try to figure out how something was made. In Northway, um, one of my hobbies was a small nonprofit that I started and we tried to organize community events for um, different age groups and one of the programs we did for the women in the community was to hire Dixie Alexander from Fort Yukon to come to Northway for a week and teach us how to do the caribou hair tufting. We didn't ask her to teach us to do the quill work but it was just one of the, one of the specialties that she had was sewing down the quills so she showed us how to do that. that was This artist residency has been really fabulous because it's very rare that I get to work with other quill workers. I pretty much work in isolation. And um, because there's not that many quill workers around that are doing the work anymore, uh, it's been wonderful to be able to share techniques. And it seems like in the workshop, every time we would introduce a new technique, everyone would then do their own variation on the technique. And so we came up with all these wonderful uh, new stitches, which, and then we, we, in the course of the workshop, go out into, back into the exhibits and say, oh, there's the stitch you just figured out. There it is on that old piece. So it's a matter of recreating the old stitches or rediscovering the old, the old uh, techniques. It's been awesome. Never a boring moment. Um, my brain just wants to know more. I look forward to coming here each day and learning what was next and what was next and talking to the other artists and seeing what they learned. Uh, Emma did some awesome stuff with quills that is old style. Awesome, awesome opportunity to be here and work with Nancy Funicello and, and Emma Hildebrand as well as the other conservators and people here at the museum. It's just awesome. I, I had a lot of the quill work that's on the, the items here in the museum. I had never seen anything like that. And uh, now I know how to do it.